quiet. It's starting. We all watched as a black screen replaced the countdown. It gradually faded into a first-person perspective of someone traveling through a forest. The detail in the scene was breathtaking. The stream followed our mystery protagonist as it showcased the scenery of the surrounding forest. Is this... A a live-action trailer? Deckard asked before we all shushed him down. The musical score suddenly changed as a growl broke the serenity of the scene and the perspective spun quickly to see a massive grey wolf leap upon the protagonist, knocking them to the ground. We could see the saliva covering the wolf's teeth as it moved in for the kill. Two arrows suddenly burst into the wolf's head with a spray of blood, and the protagonist shoves the dead wolf off. A leather-gloved hand enters the scene and helps the protagonist up. It's not safe out here. You should be more careful. Was incredible. Nothing like Vision Quest, Peter said with a grin. Though it didn't tell us that much. It looked so real. Zack shook his head. I hope it wasn't fake. Are we sure it wasn't live action? It was glorious, Deckard grunted. Bring up their website. How do we get in on this? Sure. A quick search brought up Ascend Online's website. It was bare at best. It featured a repeat of the stream we just watched, with a countdown taking over the majority of the page. There were only two small paragraphs of information on the page. Ascend Online is a fantasy-based, full-immersion VR MMORPG. To find out how to join us for our upcoming worldwide release, please click here. The first thing that the primer explained to us was that Ascend Online didn't use the traditional virtual reality, VR, as we understood it. We wouldn't be expected to throw on a VR headset, place a few sensors on us and play. That was what Vision Quest tried to do about 10 years ago. Ascend Online was pioneering full immersion virtual reality, FIVR, technology which, thanks to the recent advances in nanotechnology, we would be able to experience a video game directly, without having to rely on a screen, headset, or computer. All the information would be fed directly into our brain through the use of nanobots, or nanites, while our physical bodies were placed into a sort of artificial hibernation. From our perspective, our new reality would be one of the game world. The one downside to this level of immersion was the overhead required. Because we needed constant monitoring during our unconscious state, we needed to play the game from within a capsule, or pod, housed at a CTI player housing facility. The pod would regularly inject our comatose bodies with the required nanites to maintain our connection with the Ascend Online universe, as well as provide the needed nutrients to keep our physical bodies alive. It wouldn't do to let players die while they were playing your game, right? That audiobook got me thinking. Will there ever be a time when we close our eyes and enter fully immersive virtual games? These are the real technologies that may usher in this experience. You are watching Disrupt. Mojo Lens is a company that recently came out of stealth. In 2019, they announced they've created the smallest display known to man. As small as a grain of sand. The display sits on contact lenses, giving you information like this. This is very early concept and hasn't really been tested on humans, but let's put a time machine on this company and imagine where the technology may be in 10 to 20 years. So here we are. A transparent LCD display covers the eye. Right now it's off, so it's completely invisible. But when it turns on, 
it illuminates, allowing us to close our eyes and enter the environment. The graphics are not being rendered on the lens. Instead, it connects wirelessly to the computer's graphics card. Now remember, we aren't moving, but we're controlling this using either an EEG headset or a brain chip like Neuralink. I think the EEG headsets will be more popular, seeing as they're non-invasive, they don't require surgery, and they were even available back in the year 2020. Back then though, they weren't very accurate, though they did do some cool things. So right now we're moving forward, we're looting, we're slashing, all through thinking. In the book, knowledge is downloaded to the player's brain. It sort of tricks the user into thinking their muscles are growing when they add plus five agility points. Or that ancient knowledge is suddenly remembered when adding plus five mana points. It's described as an odd feeling of remembering something for the first time. Now, I'm not too hopeful that we'll realistically have a technology that downloads information to the brain. What we may see are new ways of intaking information. For example, rapid reading or experiential learning, which would be maximized while being fully immersive. So with this setup, in theory, we could close our eyes and play a fully immersive game. I think it would be important to make sure that with all this gear though, that they be easily turned off so that we can always return back to grounding, back to nature, back to reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last week, I asked you, should the world's first organic microbots have an ethical rights discussion, or are they simply a tool to better humanity? Eric Bazinga said, as long as robo-organisms do not form a separate consciousness of their own, we don't need to discuss their ethical rights. All they know is what we program them to do. In the future, when the bots reach the point where they can form their own separate bodies and become Star Trek-style androids with independent thought, then a discussion will be necessary. Arvensis Andromeda says, with my limited knowledge, I'd say the way they are now, we can safely call them a tool. This research will continue, and if at some point these organisms become more than just what we've created them to be, then a discussion will be quite necessary. Thanks for the answers. This week's question. <laughs>